I wanted to do a big project. I had always dreamed of just having just a huge opus that I could call mine, and I'm very affected by big pieces. So in a way, it was it was pretty incredible that I got to do something that was just utterly 100% me. This is the first type of production I've done like this that incorporates dance and lighting and, and video. It goes from rock percussion to uh, string quartet to, I mean, it's, it's all over the place. It's really pushed me to just extend my art and to see the final product was like definitely one of the most fulfilling experiences of my career for sure. I, I had no idea what I was heading into when Bill asked me to do it. Pluralism is everything. It's what you do listen to, it's what you don't listen to, it's all the influences that just make your music what it is. And when I was writing this piece, I wanted to write a piece that wasn't just a classical symphony or just a string quartet. You know, I wanted to write a piece that had everything I had ever loved. The title, Music In and Then Something, is sort of like a reference to like a lot of the early minimalists that I'm really into. I don't have any systematic approach to composing music. I almost always start off with a chord. And from the chords, once the notes start to move, you start to get lines. And I just you make use of these lines and then start using other lines and more chords. It's a very simple process, but at the end of the day, it feels very intuitive and organic, at least to me. When I think of Bill's style, I think of a lot of things. Um, he doesn't stick to one sort of style at all. And I think that was sort of the idea that I had going into music and pluralism was that uh, I would be conducting in a lot of different ways and I would have to sort of use everything I knew in order to to sort of get this idea of pluralism across. I took a lot of inspiration from everyday things. The second movement, it's called Ecstasy. It's all about the feeling of just getting super excited about something. And of course, after you have a feeling of great excitement, there's always a letdown. And at the end of that movement, there's you know a symbolic kind of letdown after this huge feeling of momentum. So I just I just worked around these really common ideas. Collaboration in dance for me was really exciting for this show. Most of my dancers, it was their first performance at the University of Michigan. And um, I didn't have a previous relationship with most of them. I was constantly vibing off them and, and kind of getting ideas from them. Working with them at first, just getting past those personal barriers and getting them to be open and attentive, especially because most of them have musicians on stage and we put them with you know 16 of them at once in a show that didn't stop didn't really have a lot of mercy on them endurance wise so um, it was a big challenge for me just to make them realize that, like the far-reaching implications of dance so soon The collaboration process, it, is, it especially became important um, about a month before we were set to do the performance. Uh, Bill came to me and said, I have to go home. Um, his mother was very ill. <laughs> a few days later, Tara got a call and her grandfather passed away. And so basically it was me and Rob to, to sort of manage the ins and outs of the project as Bill and Tara were away. It was like, for sure, working on this project that semester was the most emotional uh, time of my life because like, at the same time as I was coordinating, you know, 40, 50 bodies to put together something that just was way more than anything I've ever done before, I was facing like the last days of my mother. It was sort of in a way, music, being music and pluralism being premiered only two weeks after my mom passed was sort of this huge climax to my undergrad career. Just two completely opposing feelings in a matter of two weeks and both are much you know, more emotional than anything else I've ever done before. Bill's mother passed away a few weeks before the project. Um, Tara's grandfather passed away a few weeks before the project. And my grandfather actually passed away a few weeks after the project. So 
in many ways, this project was, was framed by loss, which, which made it a really profound <clears throat> experience for everyone. But, you know, it, it really made, made the project really, 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 really special for all of us, I think, because um, we were we had to come together in a way that we wouldn't have had to before. Being able to work under that type of, under this type of situation, I think it, it made us all better artists, made us all better producers, better conductors, composers, whatever. And uh, it really struck a blow on the Sister Tweedon Center. Oh God, I have no idea how so many people got involved. I mean, I've been dreaming about this piece for so long. Part of Bill's project was the idea that you'd have this huge multimedia experience coming together all at once. Uh, just putting in all the different elements of the live music, everything was spontaneous. What really uh, snapped everything into focus was the team that Bill had hand-selected from the onset. One day Bill handed me this gigantic score um, and said, this is what you'll be doing. This was the biggest surprise of my life, honestly, because I had no idea how unreal it would like just feel and look once all of the different um, aesthetic departments of the visuals and the dance and the lighting and the music all came together. 